Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're continuing this astonishing run of puzzles today by taking on the latest in Marty Sears Rat Run uh, series. This is called Multiple Choice. It's Rat Run 7. <laughs> I've done the first six on the channel. They've all been very popular and I have loved all of them. So we're going to continue the adventures of Finks the Rat as she, <laughs> as she learns more about uh, navigating mazes to reach the cupcake um uh, but but i will read the rules of this one in a moment i i must just shout out yesterday's puzzle uh let me show you it here we go uh, foggy on the details by carl the fog uh the pseudonym of the peddling pianist and michael lefkowitz um some people are saying this is the best puzzle that we have ever featured on the channel and given how how many years we've been making uh two puzzles a day um that, that, that that's quite a lot of puzzles that this one is apparently better than um and ju just do have a go at it i won't say too much about it because it might spoil it um but yeah give yourself give yourselves a few minutes of pleasure by ha by checking out that puzzle it really is something very original and very very wonderful and as i say some people um i tweeted about it last night and some people are saying it's the best thing they've ever seen <laughs> in sudoku space so really really wonderful stuff and then the day before that we had fist and fell breaking maths um so yeah we're, we're on an amazing run and my luggage has been returned, so all is be all is better in the in the world. Um, anyway, what else do I need to mention before I read you the rules of Marty's puzzle? Um, over on Patreon, we've got our new competition running: Skojo, Jojo, and Jobo's Clone Sudoku Pack. Lots of you loving that. Do check it out. Competition runs for another twelve days, so plenty of time if you haven't started it yet. Um, there's also some bonus Sudoku solves over there. Lots of extra crossword content as well. Uh, and I should be able to do. Um, I should be able to do tomorrow's uh, masterclass as well. So we, um, either Mark or I, uh, solves uh, the Friday times crossword um, live. And so hopefully there'll be a bonus video tomorrow morning. Um, um, fingers crossed. Now, what else did I want to say? I've got some, uh, I've got one birthday to do and one anniversary to do. So let me do that. Delia, Delia, you've turned 19 today. And I know this because your close friend Aurora wrote to us. And I think the two of you are on holiday together at the moment in Switzerland. So Delia, many happy returns. I hope you're able to have and find some chocolate cake of uh, suitably iced proportions and you have a great day today. Um, and then I'm not ex exactly sure when the third wedding anniversary of Drew, Drew and Hannah was or is, um, but the two of you, I think, are from Indiana, but currently celebrating that anniversary in the Caribbean, in fact, in Jamaica, if I'm not mistaken. So I hope you're having an absolutely brilliant time. No doubt you are. And um, many happy returns, well, not many happy returns, but congratulations on your third wedding anniversary. I don't know, what, what's the present for third wedding anniversaries? No, I've, I've really got no clue. Um, maybe it's Sudoku. And with that, let's turn our attention to Rat Run 7, Multiple Choice by Marty Sears and see what's going on today. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply, which means we're going to have to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column and every three by three box. Now, sometimes with these Rat, rat Run puzzles, it's hard to see the three by three boxes, but they are there. If you look carefully, you can see them. They're sort of, you know, they're in the places you'd expect them to be. Now, the aim of the experiment this time is Finks the Rat must reach the cupcake by finding a path through the maze. The path must not visit any cell more than once, cross itself, or pass through any thick maze walls. So that's, that's the same as all the other uh, rat runs. As well as moving orthogonally, Finks may move diagonally if there's a two by two space in which to do so but may never pass diagonally through a round wall spot on the corner of a cell. Um, so what that means is, let me go to the line drawing tool. We can't do that. Oh, that. Ah, no, it's total shank there. That's, un that's illegal. That's illegal because we'd be going through one of these round, round edge things and we're not allowed to do that. Um, now teleports now there was a teleport I'm sure there was a teleport in the last one of these I did um, entering a teleport will cause Finks to be instantly transported to the matching coloured teleport from there she can continue her journey 
Matching teleports always have identical digits, but teleports that don't match always have different digits. Okay, so that's a new rule. I, I, I'm pretty sure the one I did before only had one teleport in it. Um, so what does that mean? So that means whatever the teleport is, the teleport number is for A, that is a different digit from the teleport number for B, which is a different digit for the teleport number for C, etc. We've got one-way doors again. We've had those in the other rat run. So Finks may only pass directly through a purple arrow if moving in the direction the arrow is pointing. An arrow always points to the smaller of the two values it sits between. So look at this domino here. If Finks, well, Finks is not going to go that way, actually. But if, if Finks did, she would travel in that direction only. And this digit would be lower than this digit. So it's like a normal inequality sign. And then the test constraint today, in this experiment, for any two adjacent digits along the correct path, one can be divided by the other to give an exact integer, i.e. one is a multiple of the other. So if this was the path, um, then those two digits would have to be, one would have to be multiple, the, uh, a multiple of the other, and the same would be true for these two as well. So we could just go um, 248, I suppose. I was suddenly thinking, am I going to go reveal fog after yesterday? There's no fog in this one. So 2, 4, and 8. That would work, wouldn't it? As a sort of sequence along the line. Do have a go. These are wonderful puzzles. Um, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, and I can get cracking, can't I? Because I can see that Finks, Finks has been trapped into a corner of the maze. So Finks is going to have to go to there, at least. The cupcake is very open today. Cupcake, the cupcake's typically been, um, you know, hidden in, in a sort of tunnel. Yeah, I mean, the, the Finks can't go. She can't go along the top row because she would have to dip through this one-way door and then she'd be trapped because she couldn't go that way through the other one-way door. So Finks goes down to row two, column three, probably goes in the teleporter. Um, I mean, if she if she didn't go in the teleporter, couldn't she just do that and immediately finish? So there must be a reason that she has to go into the teleporter. What was the... Um, what was the condition today? The condition is, oh, we've got the multiples thing. Yes, it's going to be that. So, yeah, it's going to be something to do with prime numbers, isn't it? Because fives and sevens are quite hard to put on the path because they could only, a five, if there's a five on this path, it can only go next to a one because once we multiply five by two even we get to a non sudoku digit the same is true of seven so uh so if this was on the path there just wouldn't be enough it's just impossible to do that um because we could put five or seven at one end of the path that would be fair and we could shield. So imagine this was five or seven. Then this could be a one. That would be fine. And this five or seven is fine. It's been shielded by the one. But wherever the f other five or seven goes, it can't go here. It can't go there because this side of it would be broken. There would be no digit we could place here. So actually, I think we can say that Finks does enter the teleporter and therefore goes down to D down here and goes, well, <laughs> then goes, that goes straight through to F because, because these are one way doors. So Finks goes to F. Um, well, that's extremely odd uh, because, well, I, I don't know what Finks does from F, but Finks does go across that junction because Marty in typical Marty fashion has made it possible for Finks to do things like this. <laughs> um, so Finks goes this way. 
It's very strange, actually, isn't it? Because, again, I'm sure we're going to have to use some of the other... I mean, what's going on in box three here? I feel like we're going to have to use other teleporters, but it's... It feels... It doesn't feel impossible at all for Finks to just travel up column four. So something's <laughs> so something's going on that's preventing Finks from from sort of doing that. And it, well, yes, and even even if Finks couldn't go directly up column four, Finks could do rinky dinks like this. Um, in fact, if Finks ever gets to C, so say Finks went to E and then went to C. Why couldn't Finks just go diagonally into the cupcake? Uh, I, I don't know. There, there, there's there's many things about this that are slightly strange. Let's let's go back and work out. Well, do we now know this is five or seven? Surely we do. Um, you cannot put five or seven in the middle of this line. And you cannot put both five. So none of those squares can be five or seven. Because they could only partner a one. And they'd have to be two ones in the box. You can't put five and seven into both of these positions. Because both of these digits would be a one. So this is five or seven. And there's either... Yeah, okay. And we've only got one one to play with. So as we can't put five or seven into any of these squares one of these squares is five or seven uh, which is yeah i can see which one it is actually so this one can't be five or seven because it's rather pretty if this was five or seven what did both of the digits on either side of its path have to be well there's only one digit that's available so they both have to be one but that makes the d teleport digit a one which makes this digit a one and i get two ones in column three and that's not going to work so actually this digit the first digit is five or seven and i get my first digit in the puzzle which is a one there and Now, what does that mean? We've still got quite a lot of real estate to traverse in inbox one. Um, now, let me think about this. So we've got, what are the other restricted digits? Nine is restricted. Nine, nine could go next to a one, but otherwise would have to go next to a three. So nine can't go in any of those squares. That's right, isn't it? Because if you put a nine in any of the gray squares, it would have to have a one and a three surrounding it, and the one wouldn't be close enough. That feels right. So that tells us that nine is in one of two places. Uh, which may or may not be fine. Well, hang on. If I put 9 here, am I going to run into the same problem with D that I just ran into? Yeah, that's beautiful. That is really beautiful. Look, this I don't think this can be 9. It's, it's a similar point, but it emerges from having the 1 here. Because now... This digit must be a 3 because it can't be a 1 by Sudoku. This digit must be a 3 because it can't be a 1 by Sudoku. And now that digit is another 3 and I get two 3s in column 3. That feels right. Let me just think about Have I missed anything there? 9, nine can only go with 1s and 3s. I think that is right. I think that's right. So I think we get a second digit. And now this must be 3. And now, what's this digit? Well, that can't be one 
or nine, so that must be six. And I've got two, four, and eight to play, so this is two. And eight is bigger than four. <laughs> there we go. The, the the inequality sign does it. So, or what, what's it? It's not. It's not an inequality sign. It's called something else. A one-way door. The one-way door does it. So this is. So we've almost filled this box in. This is really very lovely. And now, what's this digit? So this digit has to be a, a multiple or a divider of four. So it could be two. It can't be one could be eight it can't be eight because eight is going to transplant down here ah the, hang on this might have to be two let me think about that uh what else could it be it can't be one by sudoku and it can't be eight effectively by sudoku it can't be itself so i think it's two that, that's that that seems to that seems to feel correct Right, now, what does that mean? Well, what that means, yeah, okay, <laughs> so now, where are five and seven in box seven? That's a very fair question, I think, because uh, remember, on the path, we cannot put five or seven in the middle of the path, so all of these are ruled out. That they are impossible places because we'd have to put two ones in box seven for that to be the case now this square can't be a five or a seven in the corner because what would go above it well it would be a one and that would break so i think it's reasonable to say that this is a five seven pair and therefore uh well, therefore, I feel like I've got a problem with nine again. <laughs> I don't know if this is right. But nine, nine definitely can't go beneath a five or a seven when we've got the one-way doors. Nine can't go here. Nine is not a multiple of two. So, not, okay, nine is in one of two places. And it is in the middle of the line. So we know that the nine must be flanked by one and three. And the three... So the three, yeah, the three has to be near the nine. So it's not over here. And by Sudoku, it's not there. So the three is in one of those two places. And three isn't a multiple of two. There we go. <laughs> so the three goes here. This is nine. That must be one. One is less than five or seven. So that's not surprising. Um, does that have to be six? Surely it does. I mean, it has to be a multiple of two and a multiple of three. I mean, that must be six. That must be true. And then these squares are four and eight. Oh, I see. Look, this is beautiful. That's a four, eight pair. But we can't put eight uh, under the one-way door because eight is definitely bigger than five and seven. So this is four. This is eight. We know what these three digits are now. They're two, three, and six. Uh, we we do have roping, don't we? We've got two, three, six triples going down columns one, two, and three. So as, as Maverick flies past, um, we can probably limit the value of A a little bit. So A is four or eight or five or seven. But A is, goes over here. Is that true even if the path isn't used? Let me just double check that. I was wondering, because if, if we don't go on the path to A, is it still true to say that the A's have to have the same number in them? Um, entering a teleport will cause Sphinx to be instantly teleported. Uh, matching, teleports or, matching teleports always have identical digits. Yes, okay, so I think it is legitimate to say that this is 4, 5, 7 or 8. It's not 8, therefore, because of, of Sudoku. So 4, 5 or 7. Well, oh, I see. You see, if, if, if I could, if I knew that Finks visited at the A teleporter, 
then this would have to be a 4. Because if this is 5 or 7, then the next cell on the path would, would have to be a 1 and couldn't be. You see... Uh, I'm not sure though. I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to say that because I don't think... Yeah, we could go four, two, six, couldn't we? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, d I don't think I can make that deduction and say that this has to be a four. Not according to the rules as I understand them anyway. So we'll hold off on that for a moment. Um, okay. Oh, F, F is an eight. That's useful, so I can write it in on the other side. So F is 8. Right, I see. And the next digit that F goes, even if F goes right, it must be a 2, because it can't be 1 or 4. And they're the only other two dividers. So 2 is in one of those squares. 2 is in one, no, 2 is in one of two places in box 8, because of this 2. The, the blue teleported to. Um, but if that was two, what would digit would you put here? <laughs> that doesn't look very promising at all. Because by Sudoku, that has to be odd. I don't like that. And it can't be one. Ah! I think they are. Yeah, I don't think this can be two. Because if it's two, what on earth? This is definitely path. And I don't think this has a valid option to be a multiple or divider of two because it can't be one and it can't be, it it's going to be odd. So I think that is not path and the path is going to therefore go that way and then either this way or this way. Um, right, in fact, let's just la label it up. So three, five, seven, nine. Yes. Okay. So we can't put, we've, we've already learned about fives and sevens. Fives and sevens only go next to one if they're on the path. So this is a three, nine pair. This is a five, seven pair. Oh, and that's it. Right. This is, this Marty is so clever. Honestly, some of these constructors are just so clever because now my concerns about why couldn't Finks just travel up column four to get the cupcake. They are allayed because we can never go through this. This this is not a valid point upon the path because to go through this cell, we'd have to do that, wouldn't we? And that was going to cause a one here and a one here, which is impossible from a Sudoku perspective. So this is not on the path. And the way that Finks therefore escapes from box eight is via E. <laughs> so we're going to go into E. Uh, and again, okay, how do we get to E? We don't go via a 5 or a 7, because then this would have to be a 1. So I think we go that way. So we then end up over here. Uh, I'll think about that in just a moment. Let me just w meditate on what... what we can say about this digit perhaps, or this digit. Um, this digit has to be a multiple or divider of three or nine. So if this was nine, this would have to be one or three. Don't see what the problem is with that. And if this was three, this would have to be, this could be six then, as well as one and three. And it could be nine. Oh, that's disappointing, isn't it? That's not helped me at all, actually. Bobbins, sorry. Um... Eight by Sudoku is in one of those two squares. That feels a little bit interesting. It could be here, I think. Oh no, hang on. Hang on, no, it can't be. Because the eight, no, it can't be. 
This can't be 8 because we've already had a teleport at 8 and I think all the teleports have to be different. So this is not 8, this is 8. So, but if this is 1, the problem is if this is 1, this can be anything because 1 is a divider of everything. Hmm. Okay. It's, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure where to look actually. Um, let me think about this for a second or two. If we go... Fives and sevens have to be down here. Ah, okay. Right, so let, let's stay in box nine then. Because we, what we can't do is go down this way now. Because we will traverse through a five or a seven. Well, actually through both. And we know that fives and sevens can only have ones on either side of them. So we, we just can't do that. There's going to be too many ones in box nine. So we have to go up and across the top. Now, is that going to be helpful? Well, it might be. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, oh, yeah. In fact, this square might be interesting. Because it can't be a one, can it? Because of the inequality. So this has to be a multiple of two. And it's not eight. So it is four or six, I'm going to claim. And four and six are not that big. So this digit has to be has to be relatively small. One, three, four, or five. It can't be five because it's on the path. Well, has that really helped us? Maybe it hasn't. If this was six, this would have to, this couldn't then be four. Okay, what about that digit then? This digit does have to be a multiple of both, or multiple of div or divider of three or nine, and whatever we put in here. It makes me think we're going to have to put a one up here again. So this digit is either one, three, six, or nine, I think. Uh, I'm getting bogged down, aren't I? I'm not quite, um, not quite seeing this. Oh, Bob Bobbins. <laughs> Sorry, if this is obvious, I apologise. Um, oh, how do we do this? <laughs> what is it we're missing? E. Oh, E itself can't be three or nine. Does that matter? Maybe that matters a little bit. So if... If this was six... This might have to be one then. We haven't had a one teleporter yet, have we? I don't think we have. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where I'm meant to look. It's. Pr it could be anywhere. Uh, is there some Sudoku that we need to be doing? Um. Golly, I don't know. I really... Oh, gosh, Marty, what have you done here? How am I meant to know which way I go after all this? So, Fink... All right, let's, go, let's take stock. Finks goes through here to the... What was it? The D teleporter. Through to the... I can't even read that. Is that the F teleporter? Here, and then must go up. Then goes here then goes here. Um, 
then goes here, but then seems to be able to go to A, B, or C. And all of those seem to be fine. So what is it that I'm not understanding? Okay, let's think about let's think about Sudoku. <laughs> Where is two by Sudoku? Two cannot be the E digit because that would clash here. And two cannot okay, okay, so there's a two here by by dint of some nonsense Sudoku <laughs> that I would never have thought to look for. Um is that useful? Is that useful enough that, that it helps us? I don't know. I'm intrigued. I wonder if there is a way that I can disambiguate all of these digits down here, but it doesn't feel very easy to do that. Let's think about this digit then. By Sudoku, this is one, three, four, six or nine. But because it transplants here, it is not three or nine. So it is one, four or six. So the only way that this can be nine, we'd have to go nine, three, one, and this would be a one. And that might be fine, but I'm not sure. Oh, wait. Ah, it's Sudoku. Ah, I've got it. Right, that's very clever. It's beautiful. Ah, Marty, you are a clever man. Goodness me. Right, so the key is to appreciate that this 3-9 looking at red, or, or, or the e-teleport to give it its proper, its proper, proper function, is preventing this square, the red square in box 8, from being 3 or 9. And therefore, by Sudoku, this is a 3-9 pair. So this square here can only be three or nine. And there this square now cannot be four. It has to be one or six. Now, has that helped us? Well, nearly. Three or nine are then, then getting very restricted in, in this box up here. This can't be a three because it would have, this digit would be a one or a two, which it can't be by Sudoku. So three is, three is, ah, oh, it doesn't do it. Three is in one of those three cells in box three. This can absolutely be a nine, can't it? Because it will be bigger than this digit. Um, right. So if this is six, then this is three. This would be six. Oh, okay. Well, four, apparently, is definitely on this inequality now. Does that matter? Yeah, this can't be four. That's it. Yeah, this can't be four because the only digit bigger than four that qualifies in the row would be a six here and four and six are not in a multiplicative relationship. So this is four, which means this is one. Aha, which means this is six. So that's six. This is a, th a deadly pattern. Ah, and what's resolving that? Oh, no, it is resolved. It is resolved because the six can't go next to a nine. Good grief. So we get that pattern to unwind the threes and the nines. This is brilliant. It's brilliant. So now we've got one, two and four here with that not being a two and these squares being five, six and seven, which we can probably do a little bit of. Um, well, yes, we can actually. There's a six looking at this one. So this can't be seven because that couldn't be bigger than it. So that's five. Wow. OK, well, that makes me feel better because uh, I was feeling extremely stuck then. Four is in one of those two, is, is, is in a teleport position. It's either in, well, it's not, it's not in B because it's seeing a four. So four is in yellow. So yellow gets a four from absolutely nowhere. These squares are from five, seven and eight. 
probably meant to understand more about that, but I'm going to leave it for a moment. Um, what about... Where's one in this box? I don't know, but it, if I can rule it out of the C digit, that would be very... I can. I can rule it out of C. Because C is on an inequality sign. I mean, a one-way door. So that can't be one. So this is one. So one is in one of those squares. Okay, that's good. That is good. Um, let's try... I don't know whether I'm meant to look at B and C. Or... I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, let's let's actually look at B though, because B is seeing a lot of Sudoku digits, or at least quite a lot. So B is seeing one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six. So B is seven or nine, I think. I'm going, to, I'm going to double check that because that seems extremely restricted. Why do I think you can't put three into... Yeah, I have got a three, haven't I, in one of these squares. So that is legitimate. Six. Yeah, seven or nine. And I Well, it's very difficult for it to be seven. Oh, it's impossible for it to be seven. Well, no, it's only... No, that's wrong. It could be 7 if it's not used on the path. Um, because this square can't have a 1 next to it. So it couldn't be on the path if it is a 7. But if it's obviously it's a 9, it could then be on the path. Um, right. So has that really helped us? Or are we still in a bit of the, still in the dark a little bit? Possibly we're still in the dark a little bit. <laughs> Let's think about other things then. Can we deduce... Can we deduce anything else about anything? Let me think about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. We could say that... What are these digits? Let's actually label them because that's going to give us at least a, an idea of what the cupcake is. So we're looking at four, five, seven, and eight. So the cupcake is four, five, or seven. This square can be anything. That square can be anything, I think. Uh, these two squares are quite large digits. And obviously the 9 can't go in this square. So this can't be 5 by dint of the same sort of logic. So this is quite a big digit. But so is this. Oh dear, sorry, I'm not seeing this at all, am I? Marty making me do Sudoku in his Sudoku puzzle. It's an outrage. Uh, let's, oh dear. What am I meant to do? I suppose this is quite big as well then. If that's big, this is big. We can we can say that with confidence. So that's six, seven, or eight. It can't it's not eight actually. Ah, so that's six or seven. So this can't be eight anymore. There we go. Is that helping me? Or not? Um, I feel like that's doing something. We haven't got something like a... F where? Okay, where's one? Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Where This this is a one, three pair. Yes. Okay, so I could have done better Sudoku, I'm now seeing. Once the three is up here, you can actually see that this is a one, three pair. I think that's been available for a while. And why is that interesting? Well, I think that means that 9 has only one place in this box. And then the 9 has to be on the inequality. Which means 9 is in one of those squares. So maybe actually it doesn't do... 
it doesn't do as much as I'd hoped. Oh. A small point is that you can sort of colour fives and sevens here. You can see these two can't be the same. Because if these were the same, you'd have to put that digit in here, and you can't. So this and this are the same. And they go in one of those two squares. So is there a problem with 7, 7, 7, 7, 7? There'd be a lot of 7s in the world. Oh, this can't be 7. This this digit, there we go. That can't be seven, can it? Because it would it would always be greater than the digit above it. So this is five. And if that's five, surely that's good. Well the only place for six in the box now is here. And this is four, seven, eight. So this square is five. And now we have to put five we've got five into C. So that now seven goes there. Which means that 9, 9 is B, and, and we learn, what do we get from that? We get 3, 7, and 8 into the, into the remaining cells of box 3. And we're probably going to have to think about the part of 5. 5 is a, oh, 5 actually, no, 5's doing some Sudoku. How out this is outrageous. Five has to be greater than four. So that's a four. That's a seven. That's an eight. The cupcake is a seven. Really? So there's going to have to be a one in one of these two squares to um to attach to the to the seven on the path. But we could come in diagonally, so we have to be a bit careful. Ah, but look, I know what these digits are. These are one, seven, and nine which means these squares are now a 5, 8. If these are 5 and 8, this is 7. This is 5. This is 5. This is 8 using the power of the C teleporter. I think that was the C teleporter. 5 is there by Sudoku. There are four fives looking into box 6, so we can actually place that. Um, I feel like we've done a lot of fives. We've done all the fives. They're all done. No problem. Uh, well... Not really no problem, but, um, but we have actually done them. 8 is in one of these squares. So do we now... Oh, we almost certainly don't, actually. I was, I was going to say, do we now know where we go from here? Well, we can't go into C because we can't get there. To get, to get from here to C would require going through a 1 in this position, and the 1 is not in that position. So we don't end up in C, which explains why we can't just do a rinky-dink straight into the cupcake. Although the cupcake being a 7 has thrown lots of spanners into that. Lots of spanners into those works. Um, right, so what do we do then now? This is not a 9. So we go here. We could get to we could get to the B, the nine, if, if this was a three. But we could also get to this one by just making this an eight. So six, two, eight, four. That would put us here. And we couldn't go through the five on the path because the five would have to have two ones on it. So we'd have to go through the eight. So this would be a one. Ah, ah, right. So I right. This is very clever as well. You don't go. You don't go from here. You can't go in. We can't go into the yellow teleporter because watch. If we go into the yellow teleporter, we have to go here. Now that square would have to be a two, wouldn't it? From the options, it's got to be a two, three, or a six. That's a multiple of four, or a divider of four. So it would have to be two. Now you can see the next digit now is going to be a 6, either below it, well if it's a 6 below it we can't go into the 5, or above it, well we can't go into an 8, it's impossible. So we don't, we don't, we just never do that. So, so the path goes from the 6 
to the 9, which requires us to go via a 3. And now these digits are known. So these digits now are 2, 4, and 7, I think. And that's not 4. 2, 4, 7. We go into the 9, so we end up here. And once we end up there, look, where do we go then? Because we can't go into a 2, 4, or a 7 from a 9, so we have to drop down here. And that has to be a 3, I think. I'm just going to think about that. But, I mean, it's got to be a 1 or a 3. We've worked that out with regards to 9s on the path. And it can't be a 1. So it goes to a 3, which knocks a 3 out of here. And then it, then the 3 can't... Oh, the 3 could go diagonally. We've got to be really careful. Ah, uh, because I didn't think of that. Although, no, it can't. 2, 4 and 7 are just not legitimate. None of these are legitimate. For, to join a 3. So the 3, we have to go down to this square, which must therefore, I presume, be a 6. It's only got the option of being 6, 7 or 8. It needs to be a multiple of 3. So that's a 6. That's a 6. That's a 7. That's a 7. That's an 8. 6 can join to 2. And we'll have to in one of these positions, but we don't know which one. So that is not a 2. And it goes into one of these, but I don't know. I don't know which one it could because it can move diagonally from this point. Um, so what are these squares? These squares are one and eight, I want to say. Now, what do we do next? We, we've, I, feel, I feel thinks is getting closer to the end. Um, this is not six by Sudoku. I have a feeling this might be Sudoku now. Ah, didn't we say, and we did, or how do we get to the cupcake? Oh, hang on, I've got, I've made a mistake. Uh, what? I... Oh, I see. Oh, goodness me, Marty Sears, you are something else altogether. Right, okay. I I said earlier, very confidently, that because the cupcake was on a 7, I would have to move into the cupcake from a 1. And I was about to tell you that because there is a 1, therefore, in one of those two squares, um, this square here was an 8. And then I could see that that, was, that couldn't possibly be true, <laughs> because if this is an 8... That's an 8 as well, and I've broken the world. So I, I thought I've made a mistake, but I've realised that there is another way that you could have a 7 on the path. And that way is if you get to the 7 from another 7. And that is possible. But obviously it's Sudoku, so you can't get here with a 7 from beneath it because that would break Sudoku. So the way you get to the cupcake seven, I think, is like that, and this is a seven. That is absolutely ludicrous. Um, and it's doing things, so that's a four. <laughs> um, well now, ah, uh, see now we now we've got all sorts of. We know we know the next step is going to be to a one. But we don't, well, in fact, actually, look, we do know that that's, we know, we know this can't be a 1. Because this is an 8. I didn't see this before. That's an 8 now. Um, so I think we have to go here. Because this can't be a 1 by Sudoku. So the path must drop there. This, therefore, is a 1. This is a 9. And that, that 9 is on the path. That puts a 9 here by Sudoku. So therefore we have to go this way because 9 and 5 are not in a relationship that's helpful to us. And this digit is a 1 or a 3. And that is useful because that gives me a 1-3 pair here and makes this bottom digit a 4. 
which gives me a 1 2 pair and should give me this digit by because by sudoku i think that's now a 6 in the column so this isn't a 6 so this is a 6 this row needs oh it's still not quite done <laughs> it needs 2 and 7 um this column needs ones, twos, and three. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, look, one, two, three, triple. So that's got to be a seven. That's got to be a two. That's got to be a seven. Four has to go there in box five. And this is from one and two. Oh, and it's not one. So that's two. That's two. That's one. This isn't two. This is a one, three pair. Oh, I'm going to get deadlied again here, aren't I? <laughs> three and two. And I've got a one, three deadly pattern that must be resolved by the path or I've got a problem. So let's think about the Oh, I see. But now, now because the path is on a six, it must go to a two next. And then it can't go to the five. It could go to the eight. <laughs> but no, it can't go. To, actually, it can't go to the, the eight. Because then it would go to the four and the four would be stymied by being surrounded by fives and sevens. So I think we have to go up to a four, across to a one, and we could go down to the five, although then we need double one, which we can't do. So we have, oh, so, yeah, so now we have to go to the two because the seven, oh no, yeah, no, the seven doesn't have another one available to it. We can't do that because we go through, we go through the pillar. So we must go to two, whereupon we've got to go to we probably have to go to the eight here, but let me just think about this. Um, I don't see another way of going. We can't go across the top because we need to go, we need to attach to this somehow. And even with diagonal connections, that's not going to work. So I think we go there and then we can't go diagonally. We can't go into the nine. So we must go down, which can't be into a three. So it must be into a one, resolving the deadly pattern and allowing us to connect the path up there. That's absolutely mesmerizing, isn't it? Marty Sears is a total genius. Good grief. Is it? Oh, is it right? I forgot to, I forgot. Oh goodness me, it's right. And we're gonna get lots of things to, to read. Um, experiment completed successfully. Cells visited 42. One-way doors used two. Teleports used four. Although initially startled by the noise of the teleports, Sphinx quickly became adept at using them. Heart rate returned to normal by the time the cupcake was reached. Teleport B overheated after use. Further calibration required. Um, which was teleport B? Oh, that was the orange one. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's a fabulous puzzle. It's fabulous. It's extremely clever as well that, that that path is forced. Goodness me. And there was some lovely... It was lovely that this this had to join to another seven. And that sort of allowed some of this deadly patronage to be unwound. It's beautiful. I mean, the numbers just seem to dance, don't they? The, the way Marty makes them, manipulates them. They just... They, they almost have like little personalities that you can you can learn about as you go through the solve. Very, very clever indeed. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.